Well, hello there. Today is 6-11, which actually I wouldn't even call new. Um, we're basically just going to be focusing on writing equations from graphs. So um, we've only had a little bit of experience with this. Um, so I want to get you guys real good from, uh, for writing equations from a graph instead of equation to a graph. Okay. Um, so with the 6-11 task, together we're going to be doing one of each. And then the rest of this is going to be your homework. All right. So... Let's start with number one, together. So um, I would always pay attention to what they want you to draw. So we are a right. So this is asking for cosine, not sine, right? So I know a lot of you see, hey look, that looks just like a sine, but they're asking for a cosine. So that would mean that there's a phase shift, right? So before we get into any of that, let's kind of focus on what we do know right away. Um, just like with when I graph, I like to focus on the midline first, um, which here is written as vertical shift. So it's the midline. So it's whatever cuts through your graph horizontally in half. So in this case, your midline is zero. Okay. That's the midline. Next up, I like to check maybe the amplitude. So again, that is the height from the midline to the peak or from the midline to the valley, and those should be equal. And that also kind of tells you if you found the vertical shift correctly, the midline. If these aren't the same value, that means that your midline is wrong. So this is three units and that's three units. So my amplitude is three. Okay, let's do the period next. Now the period is different than the B value. Those are not the same thing, which on the test, a lot of you guys were saying that they're the same thing. No, the B value helps you find the period using the equation two pi over B. But what you're gonna put here is actually what is the size of the wave, okay? So for cosine, it's a smile. So it starts up there. It dips down past the midline, goes to the bottom, and then it curves back up, goes through the midline, and right back up top. So a lot of you might be thinking like, oh, that's kind of hard to see what the period is. I know that it's not five pi over two because this doesn't start over here. So sometimes what I like to do is take this and shift it back to the, um, let me actually go up here. So shift it back to, the um the y-axis and that will kind of help you see what your period is so as you guys can see this drops down and your period is two pi so um, we go to the left pi over two so what's five pi over two minus pi over two two pi um, so that's what you put for the period is that it's two pi okay Last thing to fill out is what is the phase shift? So we know that, how, when do you guys know if there's a phase shift? If the sine or the cosine graph does not start on the y-axis. So did, because this is a cosine graph, did this start, did the top of the smile start right here? No. Well, where did it go? I see that it went over here. So I see that from here, it went to the right pi over two, and there's my smile. So for me, my phase shift, I'm gonna say right pi over two. Now please realize that there are multiple answers to this problem. Some people might look way over here and say, hey, no, it went to the right five pi over two. Usually people don't see that. Instead, they might say, well, maybe it went to the left and this is the smile I want to look at. So they could say, instead of to the right pi over two, they could say it actually went to the left three pi over two. Okay, so that's another option. Um, I'm going to color code. So you could say left three pi over two. And then... Another answer could be 
instead of seeing it as a smile, look at it as a frown. So maybe this guy went left pi over two and it's a frown, okay? So that'll be my last um, option. These are usually the three most common. So let's all put this together as one equation. I'm gonna start with my blue one, though, going right pi over two, and that would be this green, okay? So what would my equation be? Again, this is a cosine graph. My amplitude is three, so I put a three. You can do y equals, I know that that would make it an equation. I get real lazy um, and don't put f of x equals or y equals, um, but you can if you want. So there's my amplitude. This is cosine. Now, what is your b value? Do not put 2 pi. The b helps you find 2 pi, right? So the period equals 2 pi over b. So if the period is 2 pi, 2 pi divided by what is 2 pi? 1. That's your b value. Then in parentheses, because we do have a phase shift, it's x and then it moved to the right, so that's a minus pi over two. And then I can put plus zero or nothing. So that's my equation and you don't need that one there either. So that's one option. If you chose to say that it went right pi over two, that's what that equation looks like. If you saw this as going left three pi over two, here's your equation. So everything is the same, the amplitude, the B value, and the C value are all the same. It's just that phase shift that's different. So that equation matches left three pi over two, which would be that smile. And then the last option was going left pi over two. A lot of people are gonna say, three cosine x plus pi over two and say, okay, I'm done. But what happens when we go left pi over two? It starts down here and it's a frown instead of a smile. So how do you show that in an equation? You must add a negative to the amplitude if that's the choice that you're gonna make. So all three of these are correct. If you guys were to hop on Desmos right now and graph all three of these, you would get the exact same graph. All right. All right. So let's try the next one that we are going to do together, which is number two. And this is a sine graph. Okay. So same thing. I like to identify my midline first, which it looks to be negative three. And that's known as a vertical shift. Okay. Next, let's look at the amplitude. So it looks like from here to here is two units and here to here is two units. So my amplitude is two. The period, now as a remember, remi remember, as a reminder, sign without a phase shift, starts on the midline and the y-axis. Does that point start on the midline and the y-axis? Yes, so automatically that will tell you that there is no phase shift. You can put none, you can put NA, um, but there's no phase shift because that point starts on the midline and the y-axis. It goes up through the midline, comes down, and ends on the midline. That is one full period for a sine function. And as you guys can see, what does that end at? Pi over two. So the period for this graph, not the B value, the period is pi over two. Okay. So let's put it all together and write our equation for sine. Amplitude first, which is two, then sine. Now what is my B value if the period is pi over two? If this kind of is complicated for you, go ahead and write the equation. Period equals two pi over b. Then fill in what you know. Do we have the b value? No, but we do have the period, right? So here I'm gonna replace the period with pi over two equals two pi over b. Then you guys can cross multiply to figure it out. b times pi equals two times two is four. Let's get 
pops up. Pi over pi cancels, so b equals 4. Okay, so that goes there. There is no phase shift, so I can just put x, and then my midline is negative 3. There's my equation. All right, so that's one sine and one cosine that we did together. For homework, I'm going to have you guys do 3 and 4, one sine, one cosine. But for classwork, let's continue working. Uh, for homework, I'm going to have you guys do another sign, um, number five. So for classwork still, you guys have one cosecant and one secant. So let's do the cosecant together, and you guys will do number seven for homework. All right. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine right? So I kind of like to remember that the vertices of your parabolas are going to be the peaks and the valleys of your sine or cosine graph, right? So I like to do my best and try and sketch um, my curve, my sine or cosine curve through this because it will help me kind of develop an equation. So again, my peaks and valleys are at the vertices of the parabolas. So this is gonna help me build my sine. Can you guys clearly see what would be the midline of sine? If the valley's at one and the peak is at three, halfway is two, right? So my midline is two. So that means in my equation for cosecant, I'll have a plus two, because that's the midline. Now, um, what's the amplitude, distance from midline to peak? Just one. So I'm going to throw a one here. You don't have to do that. It's just for me like a reminder, like, okay, I did the amplitude. I have it written down, so I know that I didn't forget it. All right. Um, this definitely looks like that there's a phase shift, right? Because this graph sure does not start on the y-axis in the midline. That point is not there. So you guys have some choices here. Where do you see this point to be moved? Some people are gonna um, always wanna go to the right, which is fine. So they might go, oh look, it moved here. So that would be saying that it moved um, to the right by now. I know it's kinda hard to see. We need to get good at units. So if that's pi over two, doesn't that look like pretty much halfway, right? I would call that halfway. Remember that this was a sketch that I drew in here. So that's halfway. So what's half of pi over two? Pi over four. That's terrible pi over four. <laughs> so that would mean that this moved to the right by pi over four. That's one option of people, how they may see it. Other people may say, no, 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 this moved all the way over here to the right by that much. So that would be, this is pi over two pi, and that's three pi over two. So how much would that be? Well, this is one pi over four, two pi over four, three pi over four, four pi over four, five pi over four. So some people might want to say that it moved to the right five pi over four. And then other people may be thinking, um, you all are crazy. It actually moved to the left to this point right here. And that would be at 3 pi over 4. So some people may say, no, it moved left by 3 pi over 4. All three of these are correct, though. That's the thing. And so, um, I want you guys to be on the lookout of how many different possible answers there could be. Okay, last thing that we need is our period. So can you guys kind of tell what the period is? You can either go here, up, and then down, and then do like the kind of finger shift that I taught you where like you shift it over and see how I finished at two pi. So this period, shift it over, that's the same size, right? 
Um, you can do the same thing with this guy. So this just needs to shift over this way. And again, it ends at two pi. So your period is two pi, which would mean that the B value is just one. And then comes in the phase shifts. So here are some possible answers. It could be cosecant of x and then right, so minus pi over four and then plus two. Another answer could be cosecant of x minus five pi over four and then plus two. And then another answer could be cosecant of x plus, because we went left, three pi over four plus two. All three of these are correct. All right, so that's how you guys would do like a secant or cosecant writing equation. So for homework, you guys are gonna do number seven along with number um, three, four, and five. And then this last page, let's go ahead and turn it over. We're gonna practice writing tan and cotan from a graph. Um, we're gonna do number eight together and then you guys are gonna do number nine. Notice how I put to change it to cotan only because um, I just told you in the previous lesson when we learned about tan and cotan that if I'm asking for tangent, do you guys see how it actually falls instead of rises? So if you want to do tan and you wanna take on that challenge, that's fine. Just remember it has a negative in front of it. But if that's too confusing for you because I told you we're not gonna be dealing with that, um, for the online learning, just do a cotan instead. So for number nine, you choose. Do you wanna write me a tan equation or a cotan equation? Up to you, I actually have the answer to both on my key, okay? So that, that'll be your last homework problem. But let's do number eight. So together for number eight. Whew. All right, so this is a cotan graph. I'm gonna write that first. Boom, already getting some credit. <laughs> Next up, um, how big is the period? That's usually helpful. So remember it's from asymptote to asymptote. So asymptote at zero and asymptote at pi over two. So from asymptote to asymptote, it's pi over two. Now the formula to find period is usually pi over b. So what would B need to be in order for my period length to be pi over two? Two. So I'm gonna put a two here. Um, what does it look like the midline is? Well, these halfway points between each asymptote is on zero. So that means that my midline is zero. You don't need to include that, I just like to put that. Just so that I know that I've already covered my bases. So then for amplitude, we know that amplitude goes halfway between the point and the asymptote. Exactly halfway, exactly halfway. And then you guys can kind of like go until you need it. You see how it hits at two? Same thing here, go down until it hits the graph, right there. So that's how I know that my amplitude is two. It's supposed to be an A, but it's a sideways A. <laughs> so my amplitude is two units. So I'm gonna put a two in front here, okay? So we got amplitude, midline, and period done. Now we need to see if there was a phase shift, all right? So as a reminder, for tangent, not for cotan, this is where people always get confused, for tangent, the vertical asymptote equation is pi over two b. We already found b, which is two, so that would mean that it's pi over four. That's for tan, right? So for tangent, there should be an asymptote at pi over four. But um, asymptotes of tan equal what for cotan? Equal points on the midline for cotan. Ooh. <laughs> so if pi over four was an asymptote for tangent, what should pi over four be for cotan? A point. And is it? Yes, right there. So that's how you're able to tell that there was no phase shift. So we can literally just put an X here 
and be done. Okay. All right. That is it for classwork. And guess what, guys? That's it for mod six. Mod six is over. Yes. Um, <laughs> so we are done with mod six. Um, so I know I kind of explained what your homework is like throughout this video, but I will write it down. So your homework is to finish the 6.11 task. So it's not an RSG, you're finishing the task. So what does that mean? You're doing numbers three, four, five, seven, and nine from what we just did here. So whatever problems I skipped over, that's what homework is. All right, yay. All right, guys, um, come to office hours if you have any questions. And then we do have a test this week. So um, you guys, I will post a study guide. So that will be there for you guys to study with. Have a good day.